Chris Harding, Managing Director of JPG. Uh, we're the civil and structural engineering consultants working on the butterfly. JPG's involvement is to design the structure of the building, uh, which is basically the fabric that holds the building up. Um, stops it sinking into the ground, stops it flying away, particularly in this instance with it being a butterfly. And my personal involvement is to oversee the project, so I'm in charge of the project on a day-to-day -day basis. JPG became involved in this project via a recommendation from the architect because we'd worked together on many occasions before um, and with the building being quite unique it was very important to the client to get the best out of his building that he had engineers and architects that collaborated together on many occasions. Mike as a client is very different. Um, he knows exactly what he wants and he's prepared to get it. Often that's refreshing um, often clients would like to be able to achieve his objectives but they're constrained by other factors. He's his own boss, he can achieve his own objectives. He's different because he's operating on his own. He can you know, deliver his own objectives, he's not, he's not answerable to anybody else. He's not answerable to a PLC board. Um, so he can pretty much deliver his vision as he sees it. He's done very successful, you can see that, by looking at his business thus far. There are one or two projects that we've done in the past that are similar in that they are unique, but they're very few and far between. It's the, it's the uniqueness of this project that um, it falls outside normal commercial development parameters. Um, it doesn't have the same performance criteria of a normal building. Mike wants to see the building live and breathe. He wants to see the skeletal structure. He wants to see the mechanical electrical services. He wants it painted in bright green. He wants, you know, he wants to see the building. Um, because he's a manufacturer, he sees the building as part of that process, is aligned to his manufacturing process, which is very different. Most people want buildings to look quite uniform in a lot of respects, and he doesn't want that. I think our aspirations for the project is that it promotes other people to deliver landmark projects in the region. You know, there are landmark buildings in, in big cities, but this is a landmark building in a, relatively speaking, industrial, rural setting. There's no reason why other people can't deliver buildings of this standard. Uh, so we'd like to see other people at least have a go. My inspiration to become a structural engineer actually came from being driven over the fourth road bridge when I was 10. Um, we were, the family were relocating to Scotland and uh, I drove over it and I could see the rail bridge beside it and I thought, I fancy doing that. Some people don't know what they want to do in life, but I knew from quite an early age and that was the type of thing that interested me. To become a structural engineer, um, I did a degree in civil engineering uh, post school and went into a consultancy office, the same as the one I'm in now, uh, pretty much straight after university, managed to find a job as a consultant engineer and trained up from there. And there are chartered exams to sit at some point after a, a period of time with experience and a supervised training regime. Uh, and then there's a professional exam to sit to become a, a qualified engineer. To be a structural engineer, you need to be, have an analytical mind. You definitely have to be good at maths, sciences, that type of subject. Uh, you need to have an, you know, a, an analytical bias. It's a very methodical, precise job. It does need flair, but it has to be, um, everything has to be correct. Career in structural engineering is open to all sorts of different people. You do need a level of technical ability. You can enter the, the profession at 16 on an apprenticeship scheme and companies like ours will take you through a training regime with college to a, a process that you can get off at any time. So some people decide that they want to be technician draftsmen, some people want to carry on and become engineers. 
and other people enter the profession having been to university. One of the things I love about being a structural engineer is driving around the countryside, the country, and seeing buildings that we've contributed to. It's, it's a bit of a, you've left something behind, which is nice, a landmark.